Imagine this diagram represents a field or a garden, say. Quite a small field, admittedly, but a field nonetheless. So we have the shorter edges of this field, this rectangle being 4 metres, and the longer edges being 5 metres. Now, it should be possible then to choose one of the corners as a start point. Doesn't really matter which one, but say we picked this one. If I then walked along the edges of this field or rectangle, until I got back to where I started, I would be able to work out how far I'd walked. So then the question is, how far would I have walked if I walked around all four edges of this field? Well, the distance that I would cover I would walk along the top edge, 4 metres first of all, and then I would walk a 5 metres down this right hand edge. Then I would have to walk across the bottom. Now the length across the bottom is not given to us, but we know what it is. We know it's the same as the 4 metres. I could fill that in if we wanted. So there would be a 4 metres on there as well. And then I'd have to walk back up this long edge, which is another 5 metres up there. And we'd be adding those numbers together. 4 add 5 add 4 add 5 is a total distance of 18. It needs some units. 18 what? Well, 18 metres, because we've been working in metres all the way through. If I changed the unit and I was working in, say, centimetres instead, we could do exactly the same thing, but we'd then have our answer in centimetres. Now, what I've done here is I've found the distance around the outside of this two-dimensional shape. This happens to have been a rectangle, but I could have done exactly the same thing if I'd had side lengths for any shape field. If I'd had a triangular field, I could have walked around the three edges of the triangle. If I'd had a pentagonal field, I could have walked around the five edges of the pentagon. As long as I know the distances that I'm covering on each of those sides, whether they're paired up in this kind of way, whether they're all the same, whether they're all different, as long as I know those distances, I can total them up and find a total distance around the outside. Now, this is actually a useful concept for shapes in general. And we say that the distance around the outside of a 2D shape is called the perimeter. The perimeter of a shape is the distance around the outside. The perimeter is a 2D shape concept. Now, because perimeter is a concept, because it's a thing that we can measure, we're measuring the distance around the outside of a 2D shape. If it's a thing that we're measuring, we need a unit for it as well. To find the perimeter, we need to know all of the side lengths. Once we know all the side lengths, we can simply total them up. Notice that there will be as many side lengths in our question as there are sides. If a shape has five sides, we'll have to be adding up five numbers. If a shape has 20 sides, we'll have to be adding up 20 numbers. So it's always worth that quick check. How many sides should I be adding together, do I have that many numbers in my calculation? But we need a unit for it. Well, there's a couple of different ones we can choose, but the key word in this question is the word distance. Perimeter is the distance around the outside, which means the units that we would be using for perimeter will be units, for example, millimetres, centimetres, metres, kilometers, any of those other distance ones would also do, but it would tend to be one of these four. Which one? Well, it depends what the numbers in the question are. It depends what units the question is using, and that will influence the units that our answer uses. In the previous example we've just seen, our distances were given in meters, so our perimeter was also in meters. Work out the perimeter of this shape. So we have a triangle here. Two of the sides are marked with dashes, which means it is an isosceles triangle. Those two sides with the dashes are the same length, because that dash notation, remember, is telling us that the two sides that are dashed are the same length. So to find the perimeter, well, we need to be adding up the distances around the side. We need to pick a corner and effectively walk around the shape, trace around the outside of the shape to find the distance around the outside. Let's say we started down here. Well, we could go up this five centimetre side, first of all, and then we'd be coming down this other five centimetre side. How do we know it's five centimetres? Because they're the same length. So we'd be adding on the five, and then we'd be adding on the six across the bottom. It's a triangle, it has three sides. There are three numbers in my calculation. That's important because, again, there should be as many numbers here that we're adding up as there are sides. We have to be adding up all of the sides, not just the ones that are labelled. 
So we go five, add five, add six, we'll come to 16. 16 what? It's a measure of something, it's a measure of distance, we need a unit on it. Well, the unit we're working on in the question is centimeters, so we should be having 16 centimeters for our perimeter. Work out the perimeter, another rectangle this time, but something's slightly different about this one. The two sides we have marked, six meters and 450 centimeters. Well, our perimeter needs to be a single number, and the units of the answer, the units of the perimeter, need to match the units in the question. Problem is, there are two different units in the question here. So would our answer be in metres, or would it be in centimetres? Well, actually, we can choose. We should only have one. We have to pick one of them. It might be that the question tells us. It might be that the question says work out the perimeter in metres or work out the perimeter in centimetres. In which case, what we have to do for any question like this, where the units are different, we have to first of all, step number one, make sure all the units are the same. So we might have to convert some of our side lengths. But we're going to do the converting for any of these type questions first. Get everything in the correct units first. So maybe the question does specify. Maybe the question says work out the perimeter in metres, in which case we then have to have all of our side lengths in metres. The 6 metres is already there. The 450 centimetres, however, is not. So we need to rewrite that so it's in metres. Well, 450 centimetres, 400 centimetres will be 4 metres, 500 centimetres is 5 metres, so 450, exactly slap bang in the middle, halfway between 4.5 metres. We might even find it helpful to fill in the other side lengths along the way. We could put the 4.5 metres on the bottom here, same as, and we could put the 6 metres up the side. Seeing all of the side lengths there can be helpful so that we can just read the numbers off directly for our calculation. So then the perimeter is the 6 plus the 4.5 plus the 6 plus the 4.5. Adding those together, well, 6 and 6 is 12, 4.5 and 4.5 is 9, 12 plus 9, 21. And what unit are we working in now? We're working in metres, so 21 metres. The question would have worked perfectly well if we'd been asked to work in centimetres instead, and we'd have got 2,100 centimetres for our answer instead. But this question wanted it in metres, so we put everything in metres first and then total them up for the perimeter. One final example, work out the perimeter. And then we have this sort of, I suppose it's like a sort of L shape, really. We've got six, eight, 10, and three centimeter sides marked. And we need to work out the perimeter. So we have to imagine that we are walking around the outside of the shape and we're adding up the side lengths. Problem is, adding up six, eight, 10, and three will not be enough to find the perimeter. Because how many numbers should we be adding up? Well, we should be adding up a number for each side that this shape has. And how many sides does this shape have? One, two, three, four, five, six. It is, in fact, a six-sided hexagon. It's not a regular hexagon, clearly, but it is a hexagon because it has six sides. And we've only got four numbers marked, which means we need to find the lengths of the two sides that don't have lengths on them. Now, how are we going to do that? Well, we can do a little bit of, we can work them out. For example, this bit here. The length across the shape from one side on the left to the other side on the right is 10 centimetres, 10 centimetres across. And six centimetres worth of that length is contained on this top edge here, which means the extra bit here must be whatever we need to get from six we're at the point of 6 here. How much more from 6 do we need to get to 10? Well, 4 centimetres, which means this bit here must be 4 centimetres. We can do the same for the vertical missing edge. The height of the whole shape is 8 centimetres. And if I just draw a dashed line across from there, up to this point here, we have covered three centimetres out of the eight. 
which means this bit here, we need to cover the rest of the eight after the three. How much more than three is eight? Well, five centimeters, which means that this edge here is five centimeters in length. And suddenly we fill in the two missing sides, which means then our perimeter, we have to be doing the six added to the five that we've just found, added to the four that we've just found, added to the three and the 10 and the eight. And when we total those up, 36, so our perimeter is 36, it needs some units, 36 watts, we're working in centimeters all the way through, so 36 centimeters. In terms of exam questions, perimeter questions will either be fairly straightforward, here is a shape, it could be a simple shape, it could be a more complicated one like that L shape type thing, find the perimeter for it, or there could be a context applied to it. Perhaps it could be combined with a money problem, for example. Maybe a farmer is trying to put some fence around their field, you have to work out the perimeter to then know how much fence to buy. And maybe there's a cost involved. Maybe the fence costs are given per meter. So once you know how much one meter costs, you know how many meters you need to go around the outside. You can then work out the overall cost. The perimeter questions tend to be fairly straightforward. It will either be a case of work out the perimeter or work out the perimeter and then do something with that, possibly involving a cost.